Hi folks, today's video I just want to briefly explain about time to go calculations on batteries. So this may be of interest to anybody that's got a solar system or any form of battery powered device that they want to maybe monitor, uh, especially if you're using something like Home Assistant. This follows on to the video that I did a week or two ago about my Home Assistant dashboard. I needed to do some algorithmic calculations on working out time left on the battery so i thought i'll just do today's video it's a very brief look i'm not going to go through all the elementary aspects of electricity and how volts and amps and so on work i really want to just summarize through the line of thought that i used to arrive at the calculations and how the logic works and i might still have made some mistakes because i've already done two little tweaks that i've had to fix up but yeah, your situation is not going to be identical to mine, but it may just sort of unlock some thought or ideas around your own applications. And especially if you've got any system that works with some form of MQTT or Modbus register protocol where it can pull data from either the battery or the system that is monitoring it, then, you know, this really may actually help you. So you can see here on the top right of my dashboard here is the time left on the battery and essentially what I'm really showing is two gauges. The one is time to empty and I'm using a calculation really looking at the state of charge. So the Victron solar system does give me things like I can check current draw on the battery, I can check the current state of charge in percentage, you know 50%, 100% full. I can check the amount of watts going out on the AC load on the inverter. And I can also check things like voltage and I can query also what is the capacity of the battery. But I'll come back to that just now. So in essence, really, I'm looking at time to empty. So this is the cutoff for the lithium ion or lithium phosphate battery that I'll be working on. If you had, say, a 12 volt lead acid, all the difference might be here that your cutoff might be whatever the cutoff voltage of the battery is. But you may also decide you don't want to go that low. For example, here on the right. I can also set a minimum state of charge where the system, as long as there's still grid power anyway, it'll kick back to uh, grid power. Otherwise, it continues running on the battery if there's no grid. It's just important for me because I can know how much I've still got to use of the battery before I'm kicking back onto uh, paid you know, grid power. So it's not a hard zero really, but it's just of interest for me to, to monitor really just to see. Because I'm obviously tweaking and tuning the whole time. Where do I want my minimum state of charge? So I've got it set to 35% for my lithium phosphate. Could have made it 0%, but then obviously it'll just be equal to time to empty. So let's just look at those assumptions I made then. I've got a balanced cell P26, a lithium phosphate battery uh, made here in Cape Town, South Africa. Some of the battery data that, that comes on the battery sheet, and all batteries should be stating something like this. It tells you what is its total capacity in this case it's 206 amp hours and that's at 52 volt I think average it's end of charge voltage which in other words when it's full is 56 volts low cutoff is 47.2 so I've used that here just explaining again state of charge if the battery's empty it's got zero state of charge if it's at 100 percent it's full and obviously you know 50 percent 75 whatever and on the right here, I've also got a scale just showing really the capacity in amp hours. So the battery remember is rated 206. So full is going to be 206. And obviously zero is going to be zero amp hours. And then just, just sort of to, to relate it to voltage, again, the cutoff voltage that is spec for this battery, 47.2. So assume that that's going to be the empty point, because when it gets to that point, the whole system is going to shut off and shut down. So keep that as zero. And 56, we could assume, is going to also be the, the full voltage. I'm not using the voltages for these calculations, but I'm just saying, because maybe your system has only got volts and current. You could still apply what I'm talking about here and just adapt your, your formulas you know, accordingly for volts and amps. So that really is just talking about the capacity of the batteries. This is some of the formula I use. So obviously, watts is measuring how much energy is released per second in a system. And the mathematical calculation for that is volts times current in amps. If you've got, for example, say a 12 volt battery drawing two amps, you could multiply 12 by two and, and you'll get the figure of 24 watts. That's 24 watts of energy coming out of your battery. Then I've also made another interesting assumption, and there's a reason for this here. 
I've assumed here that the energy coming from the battery roughly equals the, the AC load on the battery. Now, obviously, if I'm discharging, I am measuring the actual battery current. But the problem comes if you're charging and there's a positive flow into the battery. There's no point in measuring the positive flow for time to go if you're discharging because it's completely unrelated. So what I did was is I used this assumption. Now, obviously, I realized that there's a little bit of efficiency lost in the inverter efficiency and you know certain other losses but it's minimal as far as we're concerned here you know if it's one or two watts i'm not really too worried about it so as i've said up here if you take watts being volts times current if 550 watts is coming from the battery it's a 52 volt whatever the current voltage is let's assume it is 52 at the moment at 10.6 amps that gives you 550 watts coming from the battery and the 550 watts then coming from the inverter relates to obviously it now being 220 volts it's been stepped up to 220 volts but inversely proportionally to that it's actually 2.5 amps times 220 volts you know still giving you that 550 watts and the reason why this is of interest here is because as i said if the battery is charging positive i need to find what would the battery current b if it was discharging and using that same amount of wattage energy that you're currently loading uh, off the inverter so what i've done really is i've taken the the 550 watt whatever the current wattage is that i can measure from the ac load on the inverter and i am dividing that not by the 220 because i'm i'm not interested in the current on the 220 side i want to get this current I've taken the 550 and I'm dividing it by whatever the current, wrong word that maybe, that's not the right word. I'm taking whatever the existing battery voltage is and I'm effectively saying 550 divided by 52 will give me the equivalent of what would have been discharging from the battery. So I'm using that current figure. So I've got two figures here. If the battery is discharging, that's fine. I'm just going to measure these amps and I will do my calculation this side. If it's charging, then I'm going to be using this wattage and figuring out what the amperage would have been for draw. So in effect, it's always giving me what the whatever we're using in the house, it's going to give me the equivalent of whatever the battery discharge is going to be. Then just remember the amp hour measurement is the amount of current a certain battery can supply for a certain period of time. So you always see a battery comes rated as 100 amp hour or 12 amp hour or 200 amp hour or whatever the case is the calculation for the amp hour how you arrive at amp hour is current times hours amp hour but because it's a mathematical formula you can also apply it this way to get the hours back so you could actually just say amp hours divided by the current in amps will give you the hours left at that particular current rating and i realize obviously if you're going to load it very heavily then you know this changes somewhat according to the curve but you know again as long as things stay relatively constant uh, which does normally happen unless you're flicking big things on and off then um, that's that's how this formula actually works this is really the crux of the whole thing really is to arrive at the hours how long am i going to run on the current load that i'm using on the battery obviously the more i use the shorter the hours you know the less i use the longer they are so it's nice to see that gauge moving as you turn the kettle on you can see the time dropping turn the kettle off it goes up again so very useful to predict if you want to see you know are you going to get through the night or get through to a certain point and so on so i've just given the the sort of practical example down here at the bottom in this case my battery's capacity is 206 amp hours that's at 52 volts so at 100 percent state of charge we could assume it's got 206 amp hour and also at about 50% state of charge, it should be about 103 amp hours remaining. And you can see now again, I've just expanded this further. So at 50%, there should be 103 amp hours. And if we know that we are drawing 12 amps at the moment, current or draw from the battery, then you can use this calculation. 103, which is left at 50%, divided by the 12 amps, should give us about 8.58 hours to cut off. So that really is the summary there of the formula I'm using. And then this is how I've applied the two 
sort of time to go is the one is the time to empty which i said is fairly easy so in this case if we are on 76 percent we're going down to zero it's a delta there of 76 percent state of charge so oops and i've actually made an error here sorry the one actually indicates that would have been 100 percent so this one is correct down here so this should actually show 0.76 here for the percentage in other words 0.76 times 206 amp hours divided by the 13 amp current that we're drawing at the moment will give us 15.84 hours to empty and the time down to minimum state of charge i've got a minimum state of charge set for 40 percent but you know whatever that is the delta between 76 which is the current state of charge of the battery down to the 40 will be 36 percent so in that formula we apply it like this 0.36 gives you that 36 percent times 206 amp and then you divide it by the current draw at the moment which is 13 amps means it'll be about 5.7 hours to go from 76 percent down to the minimum state of charge at 40 percent where it'll cut back to the grid again so these are the two that i'm that i'm monitoring on the two gauges and this i did sort of explain a little bit there on the first slide already but as I explained, if it's a positive current going to the battery, I can't measure that as the current draw load on the on the battery. So I've just again said there, I've used the AC load in watts, and remember watts being volts times current, where 52 volts is the battery's, well, I'm actually drawing the current voltage. So I am actually measuring the, the real voltage. It could be 53, 51.7, whatever the case is. And um, for the battery current for the load in amps, I'm just using this really. I'm looking at the AC load in watts and I'm dividing it by the battery voltage, whatever that battery voltage is. And that's giving me then that real equivalent in battery current that I'm actually drawing at the moment. And that really sort of is it in terms of the formulas and assumptions. What I'll just show here is this is my GitHub site. Uh, there's the address up the top. I'll put the address below the video as well. This is the one that just explains how the whole thing works the whole home assistant dashboard but what i really want to show was just the code so if we go down and we look at sensors the sensors yaml file is where i've got some custom sensors in i have put all the comments in here sort of trying to explain what is really going on but if you know also if you're struggling with trying to get the formatting of this right this can also help you in essence it's really this value template here that that executes it the first couple of lines here is just setting some variables so i'm getting the i'm creating a variable called battery current and i'm reading the battery's current the battery draw or the battery amps if you want to call it that from the battery i'm setting a variable for the state of charge or getting the state of charge should i say from the register that reads the battery state of charge I'm there also then reading, creating a variable for the loads current. I've just called it loads current because it's not actually the AC load. It really is the DC or the battery current or equivalent battery current. And I'm, I've applied that formula here, the AC loads divided by the battery voltage. So that's giving me in real time then what the equivalent current will be for the battery. I'm reading here the battery max capacity from the battery registers. That'll return the 206 in my case. If you had a different, it should return something different over there. And really, there's two if statements here. If the battery current is less than minus one amp, then I'm applying this one. The second is else if, and that'll be for anything just above that and charging. So why I've got it as a minus one is I realize that if it's at minus, if it's for example, if the battery charges to full, it now sort of hovers a little bit about, it, it charges a little bit, drops a bit, charges, it drops a bit, but it's a couple of watts only. The problem with that was the moment it dropped below zero, to just comma, zero, zero, one watts usage, discharge. You can't really apply that as the discharge load because it gives you ridiculous figures of like 2,000 hours to go. So I just applied a minus one, which is about the equivalent of 50 watts because it, it varies by about 20 30 watts up down up down the whole time this just removes that so what it's essentially doing is it's saying 
unless it's a slightly bigger load that the battery is actually discharging properly. In other words, it's 1.2 amps or 1.3 amps that it's discharging at. Just keep working off those AC load calculations and use that for the estimated load to work out the time left you know, on the battery. And otherwise, anything above that, it's applying the actual draw from using the calculation using the battery current being drawn from the battery and then it's, it's essentially this is the same thing really it's just looking at the difference between wherever your state of charge is to the minimum state of charge and i did explain that a bit earlier the only thing it's really doing is it's this is the difference it's just applying this difference the delta calculation their battery state of charge minus the battery minimum state of charge otherwise it's really identical to the other one so that's really it. Um, I hope that was of interest. It said, I know it's a little bit of a narrow audience for this, but I'm hoping if you have got a Victron system or you know something similar to that, any other solar system or any battery monitoring, maybe this will tweak your interest a bit to go and see what can you find out. And remember, even if your battery system or your battery doesn't have that type of figures available, you could look at things like you get these little off-the-market systems like uh, Ellie's here in South Africa I know and various others where you can actually put a clamp over one of the wires and it measures the draw coming off the battery or off the AC load so you could even use that often to read and measure the current and the voltage and a couple of other things so so don't think if your system doesn't give it to you directly there's not an indirect way of doing it you can even use Sonoff Wi-Fi switches some of those for 150 Rand which is what $10 or something like that you can also use those to measure voltage, AC load, and a couple of other things. And they provide the stats uh, over MQTT protocol, which Home Assistant can also read. So there's lots of other ways of sort of finding inventive ways of doing exactly the same thing. So as I said, I hope you could find this of interest and maybe apply it on your own system. But anyway, otherwise, thanks very much for watching and stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video.